In fact, studies at the HeartMath Institute in Northern California indicate the heart is more than a pump. It actually sends messages to the brain. If we're stressed a lot, feeling anxiety or frustrated or angry, that causes the heart to beat in a more chaotic rhythm and pattern, and that's creating less efficiency in the heart. It's having to work harder. Wendy Hunter saw her health decline after losing two close family members. I felt after my dad and my grandmother died, I was so distraught for so long. In my heart, I just felt it was more than I really needed to handle at the time. And the blood work we're doing is to look at risk factors that go way beyond cholesterol. After suffering a stroke, Wendy joined the Healthy Hearts program at the Scripps Center in San Diego. It emphasizes meditation, diet, and exercise. Dr. Mimi Guarneri is the author of The Heart Speaks. Doctor, good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. It, it wasn't that long ago where these were two separate schools of thought. People said, okay, emotions over here, physical symptoms over here. You say the time has come. You have to absolutely view them together. Absolutely. I wrote The Heart Speaks because, yes, we need to look at cholesterol, nutrition, exercise, but the deeper issues have to be there. All right, to so go out on a limb for me, what percentage of heart attacks in this country each year would you say are either caused by or have a great contribution in emotions? We know that 75 to 90 percent of the visits to healthcare professionals of all types are related to stress. We know that 20 percent at least of people who've had heart attacks are depressed. So, so when you hear the person say, you know, my, my, my dad died of a broken heart, and, and it sounds romantic, it sounds almost poetic, it's an emotional view of a medical situation, you say that's not the case. It can actually happen. That's not the case. You can die of a broken heart. Yeah. No, go ahead. Sorry. Well, and we recently have seen the New England Journal of Medicine. Now medicine is calling it broken heart syndrome. It's been studied, people coming into the emergency rooms with normal coronary arteries and a completely weakened heart muscle after an emotional event. All right, so, so, but tell me exactly, physiologically, how does sadness or unhappiness physiologically impact the heart? Well, let's talk for a second about stress. People can relate to that. When you're emotionally upset, you produce stress hormones. So things like cortisol, which raise blood sugar, adrenaline, which raise blood pressure, increase the heart rate, make the heart skip beats, and constrict coronaries. So we see many people having a cardiovascular event after having a stressful situation. All right, so let's look at the flip side of the coin then. If negative emotions, anger, frustration, depression, can impact the heart negatively, can someone who is happy, who is joyous, who, who walks around with a great sense of humor and a positive outlook, does, does that positively impact their heart? Is there a physiological measurement of that? Absolutely, because when we are in a happy emotional state, as you just saw in the heart math program, the heart beats in a coherent rhythm. When we are angry and frustrated and tense, the heart pattern is totally chaotic. And there's now research documenting this and showing this. So basically what you're saying to people is, and maybe this is too simplistic, stop viewing your heart simply as a pump, as a muscle. And, and I think the term you use in the book is look at the whole heart. So what are the aspects of the whole heart? I think we have to look at the heart as a pump on the most superficial level. Then we have to look at the emotional heart, the mental heart, the spiritual heart, the universal heart that connects all of us. So we just can't take one little piece. When you say the emotional heart and the, you know, the intellectual heart, I, I've heard it referred to that the heart has a soul. Okay, I mean, it sounds like we're tar starting to take one step too many here, that we're getting into a little bit of, uh, of strange medicine here. You think the heart has a soul? I think if you go back in history and you look at the work and writings of Aristotle, the heart in many cultures have always been referred to as the seat of the soul. And when I started talking to people and hearing about death of a child, stress, I thought, I'm really missing a big piece. So what you're saying, you were, you were with, the, with the, the angioplasty, getting ready for angioplasty because you knew that this person had high cholesterol or plaque in the arteries, but then you started to talk to the person and said, what else is going on in your life? and started to think that that probably had a huge impact in their physical condition. Absolutely, and that's why we do the kind of work you just saw at Scripps. We'll put in the stent, but we say we also have to do the deeper work. In addition to the diet and exercise, we really need to get people to work on things like forgiveness, gratitude, look at whether they're angry or hostile. These are important when it relates to the heart. Don't sweat the things you have no control over. There you go. All right, Doctor, Perfect. thanks very much. Thank you. Appreciate it.